Hi gang, Scott here. Gear review today, an update to the Mind Shift Rotation Backpack series. This pack has been my go-to for the last four to five years. The bag's been updated. I've been working with the updated bag for the last couple of months and putting it through its paces, making sure I'm happy with it. And I really am. So I'm gonna come and tell you about it, why I like the new bag, why uh, the updates are uh, both appreciated and useful to my workflow in the field. I'll have all the details in the show notes where you can find more about the particular bag that I have. You know, uh, over on the blog, I'll have lots more text around things to explain this stuff, but we're gonna go through it all in the video. Uh, everything from just the use case of the bag to you know the features, what it holds, how much I can carry in the inner pouch versus the top, accessories, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but let's start with, with the use case. You know, why do I like this bag so much? It's because when I'm out in the field capturing a landscape, a lot of times there is not a place for me to put a bag down and I want to be able to get a different lens, swap to a different camera body, and either I'm on a hillside and you can't put the bag down without it rolling away, or in my case, often I'm knee deep in the ocean. There is no ground to put the bag down on. So I want that rotation. I want that little pouch to come out, be able to access my gear, change cameras without having to go back to dry land or find a place where I can you know, put the bag down and work and shift things around. This makes my field workflow much more nimble I capture more photos, and that's really what it's all about. It enables me to get more photos. So uh, let me uh, first grab the, the older bag. I wanna show you a couple of things side by side, uh, highlight a few things that have changed, and then we'll get into the nitty gritties of the new bag. All right, on my left, I've got the old version of the bag. This is the one I've been using for the last four to five years, and the new one. And the first thing you'll notice, I'm keeping my hand on the older bag because if I let go, it's going to tilt forward and roll over and fall down. The new bag stands up on its own. And that seems kind of funny when I said, uh, one of the things I love about the bag is I don't have to put it down. But when I do need to put it down, like I'm just storing it, leaving it here on this desk right now, it's nice that it stands up. I wanna turn these sideways here and you can kind of see that the form factor, the older bag, uh, it's a little, a little thinner but it's also um, a little less formed. It's, it's much more, you know, just kind of uh, fluid and squishy. And the newer bag, it's just firmer and has a better uh, shape to it overall. So uh, slightly, slightly thicker, uh, which means there's slightly more capacity in there, uh, all said and done. These are both 34 liter bags. Uh, and I don't know why we measure bag capacity in liters. It's, I guess, kind of like we measure light and candle power. But anyway, it's it's a good sized bag. This is the medium sized bag of the rotation series. So both of these are comparable bags. And uh, everything else about the newer bag has just been improvements. Uh, besides the fact that it just stands up on its own, there are a bunch of enhancements to the bag that uh, I want to go through with you. But you know, they, uh, the thing about um, both bags side by side, they really are uh, same height, really about the same width. The, uh, the, you know, the strapping is all good, the stitching is all good. All of those things are the same. Zippers are solid. And it really what it comes down to is this is just a, a little more uh, sturdy and formed. And so that really means better care for your gear. And like I said, more capacity. And let's talk about the inner pouch first. That's a big deal. So the inner pouch, this is kind of the magic of the bag. There's this flap, a little magnetic lock, you pop it open, and this rotates out around your hips when you're in the field. Some improvements to the inner pouch. I mean, first, it, it holds a good amount of stuff. It's got a magnetic lock and zippers. I've got the zippers open. There's a little magnetic thing here where as I pull this open, it's, it's resisting a little bit. So you're not gonna have the, the flap just open up on its own. You've gotta give it a little, little bit of force there. But inside here, I have not one, but two full frame cameras with lenses mounted. And this is like my go-to kit. I switch between 16 to 35 and 24 to 70 in the field all the time. And instead of switching lenses, I switch cameras. They both fit in here and I still have room for plenty of other things, pouch for batteries, memory cards, lens claws, all sorts of things. There's a slot in the front here where if 
I needed additional small form factor type stuff. I, I have no problem with this. If I had a smaller type of cameras, if you're doing like micro four thirds, I could see that there are plenty of options for multiple lenses in here, definitely multiple camera bodies. The, the camera I'm talking to is a slimmer Sony a6400. When I had that in the bag, uh, I could have seen you know, a certain arrangement where I've got two of those in there plus another lens. The, the inner pouch comes with a bunch of different dividers, so you can really configure it and customize it to the way that you need. Comparing this to my old bag, I used to have to take both of these cameras and kind of kind of take them and almost put them in like a, a yin and yang kind of setup where they were they were sitting like this in the bag and it worked. It let me put both bodies with the lenses mounted in there. It was a little cumbersome getting them out, maneuvering them, making sure they settled in. And now, you know, it's it's really easy. I just have it with the grip, pop it right in, take it back out when I'm ready to go. So that's the uh, that's the inner pouch. It hides underneath, so you slide this out. There's this magnetic lock, and you'll see this nice big empty space here. Now that's important to remember. You know, you're putting a lot of gear at your fingertips here. Well, that comes at the cost of the rest of the backpack, right? So when you look at the backpack as a whole, you're like, wow, it's a pretty big backpack. Remember the upper half only is half, right? You don't have all of that capacity for other things yet there's still good storage space in here. Turning our attention to the upper part of the bag, zipper access to open it up, flaps open like that, and you've got this you know, large cubic space in the top part of the bag. You wanna have some kind of divider system for it. In my old bag, I actually just used some random camera insert uh, that uh, fit well in the backpack. But you can see it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a little, little narrow, uh, three chambers is how I had it configured. With the newer bag, they've designed the different rotation bags, at least for the 34L and I think the larger one, the 50L, to work with the Stash Master products they also have. So I now have just this insert right in there, and you can see them side by side here. The uh, Stash Master's a little bit wider, so it's got a different uh, configuration. It's maybe a little tiny bit narrower but overall, it holds a little more gear, and you've got lots of dividers and things like that to pop in here. A couple different ways you could work the Stash Master with the backpack. Uh, one is how I just did it. I just pulled the thing out. I'm leaving everything as is. I kind of leave the zippers open on uh, the Stash Master when I have it in the bag. There is a safety strap here that connects across the top, so I wouldn't have this flap like open up surprisingly on me and have any gear spill out. I can always zip it closed if I want to. Another way is to take out, there's a foam insert inside the top part of the Stash Master. Remove that, the top becomes flexible, you can kind of curl it up, tuck it in the bag, and then everything's just there and accessible straight away when you open the top. I kind of like it this way, just work with it as a little pouch, drop it back in when I'm done, and there's space around the sides too where I'll slide a platypod on one side outside of the Stash Master but inside the bag. There's a space for a 13 inch laptop in the 34L. I think the 50L will support some 16 inch laptops. You wanna check the, check the website over at uh, Think Tank. Make sure it's gonna fit the gear that you want to carry. But this part of the bag, this upper part, this is not something you'll be accessing while you have the pack on your back. This is for things that you might need more occasionally during your outing. If you're doing a long hike, you wanna have your go-to gear in the belt pack, in that part that comes out and around, so you can access it quickly. And you can have your other things in here, or you know, snacks or things like that, it, it, all in the, uh, the top part of the bag. A couple other things about uh, capacity and carrying things in the bag. There is one more zipper pouch up on the top of the bag, a little small area, you know, maybe about the breadth of my hand, like my fingers like that. So around this area here, you can put a few things. In a pinch, you can actually reach this while you're wearing the pack. If you're a little flexible, you can kind of reach behind your neck and grab a couple of things. I've done that on occasion. But uh, anything you might not be able to fit elsewhere or it's just those small little ancillary things uh, like you know your car keys or so forth there is actually a little tiny hook right in there strapped in 
great place to hook on your keys so you don't want to lose them in your pockets. Like I'm standing in ocean water. I don't want the electric key fob of my uh, car keys to get all messed up. I'll hook it on inside here, keep it safe up top. If I'm neck deep in water, I've got a different problem than worrying about my car keys. Uh, what else we got on pouches? We've got, you know, a thing on the side here. There we go. You know, a water bottle, or you could put a, a tripod here and use this to side mount the tripod. There's a different tripod mount for something straight in the back. That's kind of how I prefer to do it. Down at the bottom, a little flap here to put the leg of the tripod, and then up top, pull that out. There's another strap to go around the top, so you can have a tripod on the center, a little more balanced weight-wise, I feel, than, uh, than carrying the tripod on the side. And a uh, little, just like bits and fits and finish here. As I look at the bag here, you know, the lip of the top, it curls down and over, so there's a built-in amount of weather production here. And uh, overall, I mean, the, just, uh, the construction of the bag uh, is very solid. Everything from the stitching, to uh, the zippers. I mean, I'll carry the bag and pick it up fully loaded just by this one little handle here. And I've never had a problem. I've, you know, my old bag, four, five years now, and it is still rock solid. I have no tears, no lost zippers, nothing like that. Same level of build quality with the updated rotation bag. So what about the fit and comfort of the bag? You're gonna wear this out in the field for several hours at a time. How's it gonna feel after that first hour, that second hour, that third hour? Well, I can say with confidence, it's a very comfortable bag and it's very customizable. There are, I think, 10 different spots where you can adjust strap length and tightness, everything from uh, across the chest, across the waist, where the shoulder straps sit, how high or low you want the bag to be resting on your back. There's lots of different places where you can adjust the bag. It comes with a little instruction manual, shows you all the different places where you can make the adjustments. But just, you know, some of the things I'll point out here, you know, is that like the shoulder straps, these are very well padded, breathable as well. So they're not only thick, they're wide. So they're not gonna cut into a thin part. You're distributing the weight over a nice wide shoulder strap. The back padding is both padded it's like a little rippled, so it's breathable, and it also quickly dries. So, I mean, you know, look, you put a backpack on your back, your back is ultimately going to get warm. And if it's a warm day, you're going to be sweating. This will dry out very quickly. So you only have to put like, you know, a soggy padded backpack back on after you've taken a little break from your hike. But, uh, you know, everything about the bag, fit and comfort wise, uh, I'm very, very happy with. And I would say that the padding on the back part, it's, exceeding my expectations based on four plus years of using the previous generation of the bag. So very happy with fit and comfort. I was able to adjust it to how I want it to sit on my shoulders, my back, how I want it to fit across in uh, my chest and my waist within a few minutes. And it's not difficult to take off or on. So I'm very, very pleased with how the bag feels even after wearing it for several hours. All right, I think we've covered the rotation backpack from top to bottom now. It's key feature, the, the reason that I love this bag is that inner belt rotation aspect of it. Because as a landscape photographer, I may not have the luxury of being able to put my bag on the ground. There may not be a stable ground to put it on. I'm in the ocean, I'm in a stream, I'm on a hillside, it's muddy, whatever it might be. Or maybe you're in the middle of a hike, you see something interesting, you just wanna get that gear quickly, take a couple of photos, and continue with your hike. Uh, we've talked about fit and finish and construction, a capacity of both the inner pouch as well as the top part of the bag, uh, the pouches and accesses on the side, tripod mounts. Uh, what else can I tell you about this bag? Uh, there is there is a, a custom rain cover. And uh, the custom part is important because that lets you have a rain cover that works with that rotation portion of the bag. So the cover will fit on there and still allow you to access that inner belt pack, get to your most critical gear, take your photos, but keep the rest of the bag covered and reasonably dry in the rain. Uh, so uh, let's talk pricing then, right? So how much does this thing cost? The bag is listing for 300 US on Think Tank's site. 
that inside uh, stash master that fits with this bag that runs around $55 US ring cover is around like 25 bucks I think so kind of depends on what you need uh, certainly over the long haul 300 bucks for a bag it's like oh wow yeah, it's not it's not a cheap bag it's not like uber expensive I've used my previous bag for five years and it was 300 bucks five years ago. So the price really hasn't gone up that much. 60 bucks a year for a bag of this quality and flexibility, I mean, that's a bargain. It is absolutely a bargain. So uh, I am I'm thrilled with this bag. I'm really, really happy with it. Got any other questions about it? Something I, I, I missed or overlooked, didn't cover? Uh, please drop a question below. Be uh, happy to answer it for you. And if I don't know the answer, I'll reach out to my friends at Think Tank and I'll try and get you an answer. Hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, again, drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.